All right. So what are what are some useful harmonics? Well, this is going to come down to a lot of inverter control because, you know, a lot of times harmonics are creating losses where we don't want them, but we can do some clever things to control machines with them. So just remember that a lot of these control techniques, a lot of these things I'm going to talk about do come at the expense of efficiency and losses. So there's only so many ways to fool Mother Nature. We have all these trade offs. So we, we often introduce harmonics to achieve a goal. Um, by introducing things like the third harmonic, you can minimize neutral currents. Um, if we look at a PWM inverter, we, we can't offer a pure sine wave. So we have to, to use what we have. Well, we can do things like if I have a fundamental that I desire in my red wave, I can use something like my third harmonic in my green wave, add those together, have my inverter output this blue wave, which is fundamental plus third harmonic, and we can increase the output voltage level. We can get more power out of a given inverter motor combination. So, so we can directly, you know, take something like our third harmonic, inject it in, and get this really increased voltage, increased power out of our machine. The cost might be efficiency, but we can get a higher power with equipment we have today. Like we've already bought it, we've got it off the shelf. We can get a higher voltage output. So we can use clever tricks to increase power output. We also use it to reduce harmonics. You know, if, if you have this blue waveform, we'll just inject the, the negative sequence of the, the green waveform and you can maybe undo some of that. So you can start to eliminate, kind of think of it as like active noise cancellation. Um, so, and, and the way we do this is we command a current with a different shape from our inverter and we add these signals together and we, we get more voltage output. So this is a good, this is a good use. We, we can get more power. Um, you can also use clever things with harmonics for, for um, you know, predicting where the rotor is. So you can do self-sensing with harmonics. Um, you know, you can inject a high frequency signal. And again, in my graph on the right, um, we have the amplitude of current and the frequency. Or I guess this is d-axis voltage. Um, so we have the amplitude of the d-axis voltage and then, and then the frequency. And we can see that, you know, we inject an 850 um, hertz signal. Um, and that gives us the ability to sense where the rotor is. And this basically uses the machine saliency. We, we pulse the signal at the rotor. We read back what it's telling us. Um, and, and this gives us, by injecting a high frequency or a harmonic injection, we can understand where that rotor is. Um, and th this gives us a lot of tools for controlling and for predicting what the machine is going to do. Now, this might introduce some torque ripple, it might introduce some loss, but if we take a comparison of, you know, an angle encoder and the predicted angle from the harmonic injection, that tracks really nicely. So we can do clever things with understanding where the machine is, controlling the machine. So this is pretty cool. Um, we can use things like high frequencies to predict where the machine is. Uh, torque ripple suppression, um, you know, we can inject um, harmonics at a certain area in the machine, um, you know, in the synchronous or stationary reference frames, uh, again, depending on motor type, um, but it's basically active noise cancellation for torque. So if we have a, a torque ripple, we can inject harmonics into the current to try to eliminate that. Uh, and here's an example from a paper General Motors recently published where they're actually looking at the vibration content versus, um, versus motor speed. And we can see that in this example, you know, they have um, the same control technique running and then for the baseline and the torque ripple compensation, they turn on their torque ripple compensation at, you know, about 2200 RPM. And we can see that vibration notably decrease just by injecting that harmonic. We can see that sound power level notably decrease just by injecting those harmonics and reducing the torque. So we can use clever tools like harmonic injection to create a better experience from the machine. But again, we need to be able to measure and, and control those, which I promise I'm getting to the measurement. Um, so we can do torque ripple suppression with harmonic injections, with using our harmonics advantageously. Again, we're probably gonna be at the cost of a little loss, but we have to look at what our end goal is.